Hi everyone, Mrs. Jockel here for another math lesson of chapter 11. Today we're going to focus on lesson 11.2, which is finding the perimeter of different shapes. And so to review what perimeter is, I'm not going to sing my song, so don't get too excited. Um, but I did want to share with you a brain pop video um, to go over perimeter. So here it is. The rabbits keep stealing our vegetables, Moby. We should build a fence around our class garden. First, we'll need to figure out the perimeter. What is perimeter? The perimeter is the total distance around something. You can think of the perimeter as an outline around something. The lines in the grass show the perimeter of the soccer field. The fences show the perimeter of each piece of land. The map shows the perimeter of each state. But you can also find the perimeter of small things, like my notebook. Good question, Moby. How do you find the perimeter? You can find the perimeter of a shape or figure by adding the lengths of all of its sides. Each side of this packet of seeds is 10 centimeters long. To find the perimeter, add the lengths together. 10 plus 10 plus 10 plus 10. And you can skip count by 10 to find the sum. 10, 20, 30, 40. The perimeter is 40 centimeters. Let's find the perimeter of the carrot section of the garden. To find the perimeter, add the lengths together. 2 plus 3 plus 2 plus 5. I know it's a long number sentence, so that's why I add the easier numbers first. Let's see. two. Plus 2 is equal to 4. So now I add 4 plus 3 plus 5. I know 4 plus 5 is equal to 9. 9 plus 3 is equal to 12. The perimeter of the carrot section is 12 feet. It's helpful to break up long number sentences into smaller ones to help you add. What's the perimeter of this shape? Add the links together to find out. 3 plus 5 plus 7. I know that 3 plus 7 is equal to 10. 10 plus 5 is equal to 15. So, the perimeter of the shape is 15 centimeters. Figuring out the perimeter can help you build or design things. We want to build a fence that goes around our class garden. What's the perimeter of the garden? I know our class garden is 6 feet wide and 4 feet long. Add up all of the measurements to find the perimeter. 6 plus 4 plus 6 plus 4. I know that 6 plus 4 makes 10. So now I add 10 plus 10. That's equal to 20. The perimeter of the garden is 20 feet. Since we know the perimeter, we can figure out how much fencing we need to put around it. Then we can keep the rabbits out. Nice fence, Moby. I don't think any rabbits will get in our garden now. But I don't think we can get in either. Hey. 
All right. So as we saw from our video, a reminder that perimeter is the distance around. So when we're trying to find the perimeter of shapes, we simply add up all the sides of the shape. Um, and if we have quadrilaterals like squares and rectangles, sometimes we can use multiplication to take a little shortcut to get the total perimeter. Now, in this particular lesson, 11.2, um, which is starting on page 631, you'll notice that you're going to need a, an inch ruler and then eventually a centimeter ruler. Now, I understand you might not have those tools available at home, um, so that's why watching this video will be very useful because I will give you the measurements and we'll work together to calculate the perimeter. Now, they wanted you to start off with a real world application here, and they wanted you to first estimate the perimeter of a notebook in inches. So if we just kind of thought about a regular standard size notebook and the distance around it, um, I know just from, I guess, being a teacher uh, that most pieces of paper are um, about 12 inches long and about 8 inches wide. So I'm going to um, get my tool um, drawing, drawing um, thingy here, if it's going to work. Um, and I was going to draw a rectangle here just to show a visual um, of, our, of our notebook here. Most notebooks are rectangular. And as I mentioned, um, just from my own knowledge, oftentimes we have, um, you know, the length here or, you know, the vertical length being 12 and the width of our paper being about 8 inches, that is can't forget our label. And so if I know the top is eight, that tells me the bottom would be eight. And if one side is 12, then I know the other side would be 12. And so we could give an estimate um, for the notebook and we would add 12 plus 12, which I know is 24, and then eight plus eight, and I know eight plus eight is 16. So over here where I have a little more room, I'm gonna to add together 24 plus 16. And that is going to equal what? Well, we have to do a little regrouping. Four plus six is 10. And then one plus one is two plus two more is four. So this equals 40 what? What's our label? Well, we were measuring in inches. And so we could say that the perimeter of the notebook, um, the perimeter of the notebook cover measured to the nearest inch is about 40 inches. Okay. Now I didn't really put an estimate up top. Um, so you can just kind of put an X there. We just kind of worked through together. Now, if we actually used a ruler, you know, we might find that maybe you know, our answer we came up with is maybe off by a couple inches or so. I know in the answer book, they had instead of eight inches across the top and bottom, they had it as nine. Um, so I think we're pretty, pretty close here with what we um, measured out. Okay, the whole idea though, boys and girls, is to understand that when finding the perimeter, we are adding up all of the side lengths. So down here at the bottom, try this. It says find the perimeter. Use an inch ruler to um, find the length of each side. So in case you don't have an inch ruler to actually measure it, um, you know, I'm going to go ahead and um, fill in the measurements and just try to calculate the total um, before I give the answer. So they are saying that our short sides are one inch and the top and bottom are measuring two. So if I only write those two, remember this is a rectangle, so opposite sides are equal. So what we would be adding together is one plus one, and then the top and bottom, which would be two plus two. And what is one plus one plus two plus two going to equal? Well, it is going to equal six. 
So then we would say the perimeter is six inches. Okay. On the second one, they wanted us to switch gears a little and practice measuring in centimeters. So if you have a ruler that is, um, you know, both inches and centimeters, you just need to make sure you're on the right side. And because this looks to be a square, you would only really need to measure one side length and then all four sides would be equal. So I'm going to go ahead and tell you that one side is three centimeters. And so if we know that all the other sides are also three centimeters, um, we're going to add together the number three four times. Are you sensing a shortcut we can take? Yeah, we can multiply because all four sides are equal. We can do four times three or three times four. And what does that give us? Twelve. Yep. So 12 centimeters would be the measure of that shape. All right. Let's continue on to the next page. Share and show. We have a triangle here. And I'm going to tell you it is an equilateral triangle. So think about what that means. Equilateral, all of the sides are equal. And if we measured them, each side would be one inch in length. And so to find the perimeter, add up all the sides, we're going to get a total of three inches. All right, on um, the next two, using a centimeter ruler to find the perimeter. Well, let me go ahead and give you some measurements here in case you don't have a centimeter ruler. If I tell you the top measures four centimeters and the side measures three, I'll give you a moment to calculate the total perimeter here. Don't forget to fill in the other side lengths. Even if I only give you two, you know this is a rectangle, so opposite sides are equal, what would the total be? And if you need to, don't hesitate to show your work off to the side. In this case, I would add my doubles together, three plus three and four plus four, and then I would combine those totals. Three plus three is six, four plus four is eight, and then we are adding the basic facts of six plus eight. And what does that equal? Shout it out to me, 14 centimeters. Very good. On number three, we kind of have an odd shape here um, because we can tell that opposite sides aren't really going to be equal in this particular shape. Um, and what do we have? We have a one, two, three, four, we have a five-sided shape, so we have a pentagon. So let me give you the measurements here. This side length is two centimeters. And then this one is three. This longer side is four. This one is three. And the short one here is one centimeter. So take a moment to add those together. Now, it doesn't matter what order you add the sides in, as long as you add up all the sides and you don't double any. So I oftentimes like to cross off the numbers as I add them because I'm going to do three plus three, that's double. So three plus three is six. And then I'm gonna do six plus four because that makes an even 10. And then I know two plus one is three. So 10 plus three is 13. So something as simple as crossing off the numbers as you add them can help make sure you are adding up all the numbers and not leaving any out and also make sure you're not adding any twice. Okay. Next up, we are going to switch and measure in inches. So if you are practicing your measurement skills with a ruler, make sure you flip to the inch side. And for this particular shape, we have a square. So if I tell you this side length is two, what are the other side lengths going to be? Yes, they are also two inches. And you can take a shortcut here. And since we know a square has four sides and each one is two inches in length, you can add um, two four times or multiply. So four times two or two plus two plus two plus two, we get a total of eight inches. All right, on our next shape, we have a trapezoid, which is a type of 
quadrilateral, remember it has four sides and only one pair of parallel sides, the top and bottom here. And the top side length is two inches. The parallel side opposite is one. And then the two diagonal sides that would eventually intersect with one another are each two inches. So when you add all four sides, what do we get for the total perimeter? Two, four, six, plus one more gives us seven. Awesome. All right, over to the next page. This is the on your own. You're always welcome to pause the video and give it a try on your own, especially if you have a roller um, to measure the side lengths. But if you don't, just keep watching and we'll um, go through together. Now, first I want to ask, what do you think this shape is called? It has four sides to it, so it's a quadrilateral, but be careful in naming the shape. This is not a rectangle. Can you think why this is not a rectangle? It doesn't have perfect right angles. Notice that they are slightly slanted. It's like a rectangle that's tilting a little bit, so we could not call this a rectangle at all. In fact, it is a parallelogram because it has opposite sides parallel. Now, if I tell you the top is two inches and the one side is three inches, that should help you know that opposite sides are still going to be equal. Okay, so top and bottom are two. Our sides are both three inches and the total perimeter would equal what? Three plus three is six. 2 plus 2 is 4, 6 plus 4 is 10, so 10 inches. All right, this next shape has six sides, so remember what we call a six-sided shape. Think of that X in six is like the X in hexagon. So we need six side lengths to add together. Let me give those to you. Three centimeters across the top two centimeters going down this side. Um, the next measurement is two centimeters and that's for this horizontal um, side length. And then this side length going vertically down measures three centimeters. Across the bottom it is one and up this other side it is five centimeters. So add those up. I'm going to cross off my numbers as I add them. Three plus two is five. Ooh, plus another five is 10. And I see three and two over here makes five. So that's 15 plus one more, 16. So a total of 16 centimeters. All right, down here, number eight, mathematical practice here. It says to use the grid paper to draw a figure that has a perimeter of 24 centimeters. Label the length of each side. All right, so we need to draw a shape that has a perimeter of 24 centimeters. Now, remember, each mark um, you know, from the top corner of a square to the bottom corner of a square equals one centimeter. Now, it doesn't matter if we draw a three-sided shape, a two-sided, um, not a two-sided shape, that wouldn't work, um, four-sided or five-sided. Um, I'm just going to pick a quadrilateral because I feel like that would be easiest to draw. So... Let's see, I'm gonna go with, and I'm gonna get my line maker so I can draw straight lines here. All right, so I'm just gonna pick a spot to start and let's go one, two, three, four, five, six, okay? And I need to label that. Now, I should tell you my little trick here. If we know our perimeter needs to be 24 centimeters and I want to make a four-sided shape, I'm thinking, can I divide 24 four times? Is there a number that this would equal? Does this work out evenly? So 24 divided by four 
you can think multiplication to help out here. Four times anything, does anything equal 24 when we multiply by four? And hopefully you are thinking, yes, Mrs. Jockle, six, six times four. So that's kind of my trick as to how I knew to make that first side length six. Now you can always just test it out and experiment. Um, and if it doesn't work out, you just erase and try again. So now I know I need to make my side six um, units. So one, two, three, four, five, six. And then I'm going to go six units across the bottom. Can you think of what shape this is going to make if all of my sides are six units? And actually, I shouldn't say units. We do know that this is centimeters. These are centimeter squares on our grid. So each side is six. And so this is making a square. In case anyone shouted out that answer, yes, this is a square because all four sides are equal. And the perimeter of this shape, oftentimes capital P, is the abbreviation for perimeter. And 6 plus 6 plus 6 plus 6 would equal 24. And don't forget our label is centimeters. Okay? All right. So we answered that question over to the next page, our problem solving application here. Problem solving. Um, let's see. Number nine, which of the animal photos has a perimeter of 26 inches? So let's look at the first picture of the bird. This photograph has five inches across the top and bottom. So that would add to be 10. The sides are eight inches each. So eight plus eight is 16. So the perimeter would be adding all those sides together. And so 10 plus 16 would equal 26. So therefore, I think we found our answer, but let's just be sure this isn't a trick question and the answer is both pictures. Let's look at the picture of that cat. He looks a little grumpy or just sleepy maybe but the top and bottom of the picture are seven inches each so seven plus seven is 14 and the side lengths are both four inches so four plus four is eight and when we add 14 plus eight four plus eight is 12 regroup one plus one is two Okay, so the perimeter of the cat picture is equal to 22 inches. So the answer, which animal photo has a perimeter of 26? I think we can see that that is the bird picture. Okay, so the picture of the bird. All right, number 10 is a go deeper. How much greater is the perimeter of the bird photo than the perimeter of the cat photo? All right, so it was a good thing that we found the perimeter of both pictures because now we need to figure out how much greater the bird photo is in its perimeter than the cat photo. So the bird picture had a perimeter of 26 inches and the cat picture had a perimeter of 22. When it says how much greater, remember what math operation that's telling us to do, that's subtraction. So 26 minus 22 is going to equal a difference of four. So we could say four more inches. All right, let me check and make sure this is still recording. can't see my pause button anymore. Okay, we're good. I just got a little nervous that I wasn't recording and I was just talking to myself for no reason. Oh, we seem to be in good shape. I just couldn't find the video recorder and usually it's in the bottom of my screen. 
Okay, moving along here. Think smarter number 11. Erin is putting a fence around her square garden. Each side of her garden is three meters long. The fence costs five dollars for each meter. How much will the fence cost? All right, well there are some key words in this problem. She's making a square garden, so let's draw a square over in our workspace. And it tells us that each side of the garden is three meters. So I'm going to label each side as three because we know squares have all equal sides. So what is the perimeter of her garden? If we add up all the sides, three plus three plus three plus three, or we could use multiplication as a shortcut. Yes, we get a total of 12 and we're measuring in meters. So the perimeter is 12 meters, but we're not quite finished yet. We need to figure out the cost of her fence. It's going to cost $5 for each meter. And we just said she needs a total of 12 meters in order to cover her garden, to put a fence around it. So what do we need to do with 12 and five? Each is our key word here. 12 meters and each one costs $5, so we need to multiply. All right, so here's what we do when we are multiplying 12 times five. We start with the five and multiply it by two. Five times two is 10. So we're going to regroup a one up here. And then we're going to multiply five times one. Five times one is five. And then we add in the one that we regrouped. This is what's different um, when we multiply versus adding. So we still multiplied five times one and got five plus that extra one and that equals six. So this is going to equal a total of $60, okay? So it will cost $60, okay? All right, number 12, the right math. Gary's garden is shaped like a rectangle with two pairs of sides of equal length, and it has a perimeter of 28 feet. Explain how to find the lengths of the other sides if one side measures 10. All right, so it said that his garden is shaped like a rectangle, so you know me, I love pictures to help visualize the problem. So I'm just gonna draw a little rectangle over here. And it says that the perimeter is 28, so that would be the total distance around, and one side measures 10 feet. So I'm gonna make one side over here 10, and what do I know about rectangles? Well, if that side is 10, I know that this other side has to be 10, and 10 plus 10 is equal to 20. And if the total perimeter was 28, how much is left? Okay, so eight feet would be left, but remember we need to split that eight feet among the two sides that are left over. So eight divided by two equals four. So that means the top and the bottom would measure four. Now, of course, I want to double check this to make sure I calculated correctly. 10 plus 10 is 20, 4 plus 4 is 8, and 20 plus 8 is 28. So that matches the total perimeter. So even though we only knew one side of the rectangle, knowing the total perimeter helped us figure out what all of the other three sides would equal, okay? So since a rectangle has four sides with opposite sides equal, comma, I knew one of the other sides would also be 10 feet. 
Okay, let me shrink my writing here and give you a moment to jot this answer down. So we're explaining what we know. Since a rectangle has four sides with opposite sides equal, I knew one of the other sides would also be 10 feet. Next, 28 minus 20 equals 8 feet left for the other two sides. So, 8 divided by 2 equals 4 feet for each remaining side. Okay, I know that might not fit in all of the writing space you have. Since I'm typing, I'm able to make it a little smaller. Um, but really, showing your work is a great way of explaining what you're doing and also trying to put it into words um, a little bit. So even if you don't write exactly what I have, as long as you have something similar to explain the steps that we took, okay? If you need to, you can pause the video to finish writing and then move on to number 13 with me. It says, Use an inch roller to measure this sticker to the nearest inch. Then write an equation you can use to find its perimeter. So for this sticker, um, my book is telling me that the long sides are measuring three inches and the shorter sides are measuring two. So if we were to calculate the total perimeter then of this particular sticker, we would add 3 plus 3, which is 6, and then 2 plus 2, which is 4, and 6 plus 4 equals a total of 10. Now, I'm just kind of writing that there so I don't forget it, but I also need to come back over to the question and write the equation, which is simply how we solved it. We did 3 plus 3 for the two long sides plus 2 plus 2 for the two shorter sides, and that equaled a total of 10 inches. So our total perimeter is 10. All right, guys, home stretch. Practice and homework, finding the perimeter, using a ruler. Um, they did number one for us, measuring the size of that trapezoid in centimeters, getting a total of 12 centimeters for the perimeter. On number two, I will give you the measurements for this pentagon. It has five sides. So this top side is measuring five centimeters. The two short sides here are measuring one centimeter each. This side at the bottom is two, and our diagonal side here is four. So think of what the total would equal for the perimeter. I'm gonna do four plus one is five, plus five is 10, plus two is 12, plus one more is 13. So 13 centimeters for the total perimeter. Number three, problem solving. Evan has a square sticker that measures five inches on each side. What is the perimeter of the sticker? Well, knowing that it is a square, squares have all equal sides. And I know a square has four sides. And if each side is five inches, I could do four times five. And that equals a total of 20. Don't forget your label of inches here. All right, over to number four, Sophie. Um, Sophie draws a shape that has six sides. So what kind of shape is she drawing? Six, a uh, hexagon. Each side is three centimeters. What is the perimeter? Well, six sides times three centimeters each equals a total of 
Six times three is 18. And don't forget your label centimeters here. Okay. Number five, we're just going to skip past that. It wants us just to draw our uh, two of our own figures that have a perimeter of 20 units. Um, so you could kind of just refer to number three because that would be a square that each measured five around it. And then you could draw another one as well. But we're going to move on. I like to use the shapes they already have for us. This one says to um, that Ty cut a label the size of the shape shown. What is the perimeter in inches of Ty's label? So they wanted us to measure in inches. Um, so I will tell you that this side is two inches and the short side is one. So that tells us opposite sides are equal, being that this is a rectangle. So two inches plus two inches is four. And then plus the one and one, five, six. So we get a total of six inches. On number two, Jolie drew the shape shown below. What is the perimeter in inches of the shape? Well, each side length is two inches. And being that this is a square, we can do two times four, which equals eight. So this equals a total of eight inches around. Spiral review. What is the perimeter of the shape? Remember, um, when we have grid paper, we can count the perimeter from um, each corner of the grid squares as one unit. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen. Whoa. <laughs> Let me fix that one. 1920. So I got a, a total here of 20 units. We don't know if those units are centimeters or not, so we can just put units. All right, Vince arrives for his trumpet lesson after school at the time shown on the clock. What time does Vince arrive for his trumpet lesson? Our hand is the short one. It is between the three and the four, so we are in the hour of three. Our colon separates the hour and minutes. Mm, that minute hand is right past the five. Remember, we count by fives around the big numbers. Five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 26. So I would say he arrives about 326. Now let's be smart here. Is it a.m. or p.m.? He's showing up for a trumpet lesson. Would he be doing that at 326 a.m. in the morning or 326 p.m., which is most likely after school? I'm thinking what you're thinking, p.m. I don't think anyone would be happy to have someone playing the trumpet at 326 in the morning. Number five, Matthew's small fish tank holds 12 liters. His large fish tank holds 25 liters. How many more liters does his large fish tank hold? How many more means we're finding the difference. 25 minus 12 will tell us how many more liters are in the big fish tank. 5 minus 2 is 3, and 2 minus 1 is 1. So 13 liters is the difference. And lastly, comparing one sixth to one fourth. Since our numerators are the same, we have to look at our denominator. And as Ricari would always say, the bigger the number, the smaller the pieces. So even though six is a greater number, it means those pieces are going to be much smaller. So it is less than um, one fourth. All right, boys and girls, it was fun hanging out with you this morning for this video. I wish it was in person, however. Um, tune in for one more math lesson for this week on chapter 11.3, which is still on exploring perimeter, but it gets a little more challenging when we have some side lengths that are missing. I also encourage you to be practicing your math facts each day, whether that be addition, subtraction, multiplication, or division. 
I also encourage you to hop onto Study Island every once in a while and work on some lessons there. There's lots of um, good practice that ties in with the chapters that we're talking about. And then also check out some of the videos that are out there for either math facts or the math antics videos. Those are always kind of fun and can help you, um, you know, just expand your knowledge and kind of challenge yourself a little bit more. If you need anything, as always, please reach out to me. I love hearing from you. I actually wish more of you needed help so I could feel more useful, but I'm glad that so many of you are doing well at home. You have wonderful teachers at home. Your parents are working so hard to make sure that you are getting your, your learning in and that you'll be ready for next school year. So I will talk to you guys soon. Miss you all. Have a great rest of your day. Bye.